Before this video starts, be sure that you are subscribed to my channel, like and leave your comment under my video. This simple manipulation will help me promote my work to the top and therefore more people will be able to see my content. Thank you. Ok, let's begin. What's up people? This is Nick Artist 89 back again with another video. And this time I'll start off by presenting you with a question. What makes metal look like metal? For instance, let's look at the sphere. Is it made of metal? I feel this could be anything. Clay, plastic, some rough mat, finished material, anything but metal. So what that single defining factor that can give the sphere a metallic look? The answer is luster. Luster is sort of a reflective shine. It even makes the nearby texture of the material pop out, like scratches and dents. It's what makes steel look all shiny and metallic. Let's take another example. And this time we'll be using a piece of knight armor. So this looks like an armor, but what is it made of? At this point it can be clay or plastic, but not metal. Uh, it lacks that single defining factor that's supposed to give it that metallic look. Now let's turn on the magical layer of luster and boom! Now we have metallic armor with its glorious shine. And then we can add a bit of texture like scratches, dents, rust and some reflections. And we'll have proper metal material. So now that we know what makes metal look like metal, let's see how we can create that metallic lustrous effect. And to learn it, make sure to watch this video till the end. And I'll show you how you can go from this rough sketch to this polished rendering. So give this video a like, subscribe, click on the bell icon to get notified about my upcoming videos. Also, if you are new to this channel, this video is a part of an ongoing tutorial series where I try to teach you guys how to paint elements and materials like leaves and foliage, rocks and mountains, clouds and so on. Check out the other videos in the series as well. If we are to plot the value transition of this on a graph, uh, it won't look like a smooth curve like this, where the start and end point denote the darkest value or shadow and the highest point denote the brightest value or highlight. A graph like this would be true for less reflective materials like clay, plastic, wood or even rusted iron. Where the transition from shadow to light and back to shadow happens very gradually given a smooth curve on the graph. But for a shiny metal the graph will look something like this. The darkest tones gradually transition to lighter tones and then it plateau for a bit. And then suddenly it peaks at a point which denotes the luster. And again it drops to a petal followed by a gradual transition down to the darker tones once again. So for a metal to look like middle it's important that the brightest value does in fact peak at a point. The smoother the curve is the more rough and less reflective the material is. And the steeper it is the more reflective the material is. I hope that brief explanation cleared things up a bit for you all conceptually. So I'm going to roughly sketch out its main shape. It's gonna be a shoulder pad, so it will have a nice round curvy volume to protect the shoulder from all sides. But also mobility should be a factor. It shouldn't hinder the movement of the arm. So it could have several smaller armored plates that would protect the biceps on the side and be flexible at the joints uh, to make it easier to move. But I didn't create an additional protection for the biceps. Uh, for the lesson it will be enough for us to draw protection only on the shoulder. You can look at lots of references of armors to get a better understanding of how they function. Once I'm happy with the rough design, I'll take a new layer and make a cleaner sketch. This time and try to do add more details such as volume and thickness, which is very important for an armor. It shouldn't look like thin tint foil, it's solid metal armor meant to protect you from the enemy attacks, so it should have a thick and dense solid volume. For convenience I added a color palette for metal in the upper left corner. The metal will be called shades of grey, blue, dark grey, almost black, white and grey tones. There will also be some rust. 
For this we will use red tones, but it will be toward the end of the video about our shoulder pad. I continue to fill with dense stroke the shadows based on our shoulder pad. I'm working on the edges of our shoulder pad. In the shadow areas of the thickness, a complex deep color of dark gray will be used. For the convenience of the viewer, I decided to duplicate each of the fourth stage of rendering on separate layers, so that you can visually track the progress of our armor. Now I'm in the second stage of painting our armor. I also advise you to separate light and shadow into separate layers. It will be more convenient for you to correct your work in layers. No need to merge all the layers at once into one. And so we smoothly move on to the third stage of working out our armor. Since we have laid out light and shadow on our armor, but it still doesn't look quite metal, we need to add a luster to our metal. We take white and add a highlight to the center of our armor at the top. Looks more solid. Now it reminds me of metal. We also add drop shadows from the thickness of the armor in the upper part of the border and the armor look like it's alive. I also go over the highlight with a little soft brush to create a slight illusion of a glow on the metal from the light. I work on the edge of the side of the light areas on the armor and at this stage I take up drawing on a separate layer of small details such as cracks from sword strikes for example. Small details and nuances always come at the end of your work, so your object shape will look complete. The recesses in the cracks will be our darkest shade since there is practically no light penetrating there. Along the edges of the crack paint light almost even lines, since the cracks from the blow of the work will always be even. And plus this approach always gives a live picture at the end. I'm refining the shape, adding elements of rust on the metal and it already looks like a finished product. In the fourth, final stage, I will bring our art to the final polish. I duplicate the layer from the third example and continue working on it. In this case, all future refinement and polishing will be carried out on separate layers. I create sword scratches on top of our object. This will be direct sword scratches received in battle by our unknown character. I assume that about 5 scratches in a random order will be enough. It is very good to cross scratches on the background of metal glare. This approach gives realism to our texture, since we are playing on a sharp contrast of light and shadow. In other words, a dark scratch will look better in the highlight than in the shadow area of the object, but that doesn't mean we can create scratches in the shadow too. They also play in the shadows. Just don't forget that even in the shadows part of the object, there will be a glare from the thickness of the metal on the scratch. It just won't be as bright as the light. Zoom in and out of your picture to help you look at the subject. If somewhere the highlights are very bright, you can always muffle them with an eraser. That's what we need separate layers for. It will be easier for us to correct tone down our cracked dents and scratches and their light part in the shadows. I added a black outline to our object to make it cartoonish. It's not necessary, but I wanted to. It also helped to highlight our armor even more. I also continue to refine our shoulder pad. I fixed shadow areas. I'm also working on an additional light source in the right corner of our shoulder pad. There are shades of cold, greenish blue-gray. Sometimes the side glow enhances the volume on your item. This method works very well, especially on rounded objects. You can see this in the example of a metal ball. As you can see, I added a warm shade of red-orange to the shady area of our pauldron. This gives an interesting effect in the shadows. I could leave the shadow area black, but this way it would be flat. Therefore, do not forget to fit colors into the shadow areas too, just leave them muted. 
So I hope this video was useful. If you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, make sure to go ahead and check those out. So that's all for now. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and watch my videos from start to finish. It takes me a lot of time to create such a content and I don't think it will be difficult for you to click like and sign up. See you at the next one. Peace.